Hey everybody, Chris Serino here from the Sultana Education Foundation. I'm sitting here in Chestertown on the Chester River and we're going to do a quick test to measure the salinity of the Chester River here today in mid-March. So the Chesapeake Bay gets salt from the Atlantic Ocean, which is down here and it seeps, it, seeps in uh, between the capes with the incoming tide. And in the Chesapeake, it's mixed with fresh water that's flowing down all of these rivers. And what happens in the bay is that salt water and the fresh water mix to create brackish water. Okay, so when scientists measure the salinity of water, they do it using a unit known as parts per thousand, or PPT. So in each one of these little containers are a thousand beads to try to show you this concept. This is fresh water. So if each bead represents a particle of water and there's a thousand beads in here, there's zero particles of salt. So fresh water has a parts per thousand measurement of zero parts per thousand, right? By contrast, salt water has 35 salt particles for every thousand particles. So again, same deal, thousand beads. But in this case, we have 35 salt particles mixed in there. That's what gets you salt water. Now, the interesting thing is if fresh water is zero and salt water is 35 parts per thousand, well, what's the salinity of brackish water when these two mix together? And the answer is it can be anything between zero and 35. If, so if we do this and we get a salinity measurement of two parts per thousand, it means there's a little bit of salt and we're almost close to the fresh water. If we get a salinity re reading in the 30s, it means we're almost as salty as the ocean. So let's do this test and see what the salinity is here right now. Okay, so to do this, I've got a pretty fancy piece of gear here. This is a YSI salinity meter. I'm gonna turn it on. Eventually it'll give me a reading of 0.0. .0. All right, I'm gonna take this probe out. I'm simply gonna put it in the river right here and we'll see what the salinity is in the Chester River today, right in front of Chestertown. Here we go. So today the salinity is 3.0, three parts per thousand, right? So who cares? Well, here's why you care. That's pretty low salinity, right? That's low salinity brackish water. And I'm gonna show you some pictures here in a minute to explain this further, but basically any fish that you catch up here, they don't need a ton of salt to survive. They're actually gonna prefer low salinity waters. So again, to illustrate this point, salt water is 35 parts per thousand, 35 particles of salt for every thousand particles. Fresh water is zero and brackish water is anywhere in between. Today, our test measured three parts per thousand. So we're way towards the fresh end of the spectrum here. And the reason that's important is because different fish prefer different salinity levels. So at three parts per thousand, we're not gonna see a sandbar shark. He likes a lot of salt in the water, right? We're also not going to see a brook trout that can only live in totally fresh water. But we might see a channel catfish, which has a range of salinity tolerances, or a white perch. And then some species, like striped bass, can actually adjust to anything from zero to 35 parts per thousand. And that's one of the reasons striped bass are so popular. They can be really anywhere in the bay. So knowing that salinity level is really critical for letting you predict what type of marine life you're gonna find in any given location on the Chesapeake Bay or its tidal tributaries. So just to wrap up, here's the whole bay. Here's the bustling metropolis of Chestertown. We learned today that the salinity was three parts per thousand. The reason that we care is it's gonna dictate what kind of marine life we find right up here. And that's something you should know when you're traveling out here on the waters of the mighty Chesapeake.